Hey guys, welcome back to How Come. This episode, we are talking about polyamory. Um, we've talked about polyamory a lot on this podcast, um, but mostly by people who don't know too much about it, who have only dabbled in it. But today, I am talking to one of the most knowledgeable people uh, who practices polyamory and writes about it as well. Uh, Sharon Pfeiffer is my guest. She is a feminist writer and sex educator. She has been writing about sex for 20 years. Um, her work has appeared in more than 100 publications, including Bravo TV, Kinkley, Marie Claire, Playboy, Refinery29, She Knows, Thrillist, and The Washington Post. She also writes a column on the business of sex at Forbes.com. How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just Welcome, Sharon. Hi, Remy. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great. Awesome. How are you doing? I'm great. Um, so we have recorded this episode before. Uh, yes. I had to pull the first version because uh, there was a person on it that we interviewed that it turns out um, got accused of some pretty heinous sex crimes. Um, I kind of wanted to, I, I didn't want to pull it um, because I wanted to cover my ass. I wanted to pull it because I didn't really want to give him a voice. Um, but I do, I d- did want to address it because I felt like, like he said something to me at the beginning of the episode about it. And he was like, yeah, she accused me of a bunch of stuff. And I had this knee jerk reaction of, okay, cool. Let's move on. Uh, right. Which isn't great. Um, but we are recording this episode, uh, right after Dr. Ford has just testified against, um, Kavanaugh. And I was thinking like, as much as we all talk about believing women, I'm a woman and my knee jerk reaction was I'm going to believe this guy sitting in front of me, uh, which is terrible. And it's something that I, I have to unlearn and, um, but I, I do think it's an important thing. And, and I think, uh, if, if other people have, have done that before and, and they can relate to this position, it's okay, but change your mind a little bit. Right. Yeah. And ask questions. Cause a lot of stuff can mean a lot of different things. It's not always bad, but you never know. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I'm sorry for anybody who listened to that episode because I don't really want to give that person a platform. Um, but I do want to give you a platform because you are so knowledgeable and, uh, it would be remiss of me not to give our listeners your experiences again. So thank you. I really appreciate having another opportunity. Of course. Um, (laughs) so I think I'm going to be a little more educated this episode too. I just told you, I started watching, um, the show uh, polyamory on Showtime. So now I feel like I, I get it more. Um, it's such a great show, isn't it? It's such a great show. And one of our listeners, uh, thank you, which whoever you are, uh, um, <laughs> for recommending it to me because she had said her and her boyfriend started watching it cause they thought it would be like sexy, like kind of, and it is really sexy, but it's also very educational as well. Um, yeah. And it makes you look at relationships if you don't know anything, or even if you are practicing polyamory, it just, it's another perspective of how people do things because everybody does their relationship styles so very differently. Yeah. And a lot of, uh, what I noticed, and especially in episode one was, uh, one or not uh, season one was inst- instead of thinking, Oh, polyamorous people are these people that they're just so free with their bodies. It, it really teaches you that there are a lot of rules um, in order to keep those relationships above board and feeling good so that everyone like feels emotionally fulfilled, not just Absolutely. sexually. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, I mean, there's rules in any relationship, but once you start, um, applying them to multiple relationships, it's kind of, you have to keep track of, okay, like here are the rules and boundaries within this framework. And it, it differs from place, you know, relationship to relationship. So it gets, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And and like, I can see that in the show, there's like, first there's, um, there's a, what do they call them? They call themselves a a triad. Yes. Um, and it is two married hetero, a married heterosexual couple who brought on, brought in a girlfriend and she's the girlfriend Mm -hmm. to both of them. Um, and so they have a triad and then they have two, uh, couples that are married that have decided to become a quad and Mm -hmm. move in and raise one of the couple's 
children together. Um, and so I was like, oh my, like there, there's all these different work. It's really like a kind of build your own sandwich. Yeah, exactly. Like DIY, whatever relationship you want. Yeah. And that's so like, even to apply that to a, a two person relationship is like, you don't have to have the rules that everyone in society says you need to have. You need to do the thing that works for you. Exactly. And I don't think we're ever, we're, we don't get that messaging. And I think, um, I said last time we talked, I think all of us, well, at least most of us are raised in such a very specific way in how we look at and think about relationships. And it's for most people, it's, you know, you are in a heteronormative relationship and you get married and you have kids and there's this whole progression that you're supposed to follow Mm -hmm. because society tells you to, and it's, you know, you, are committing to stay on the straight and narrow and be faithful to your partner and all of this stuff, which is perfectly fine if that works for you. I know that monogamy and marriage and traditional family setups work for a lot of people, Mm -hmm. but we're never given the option to say, Hey, you know, what else is out there? Or, you know, maybe you get into that situation and somewhere down the line, you're like, Hey, this isn't working for me because guess what? If you're with somebody for years and years and years, relationships ebb and flow and your needs may change or, you know, sex drives change or you, things change. And it's like, yeah. there's no room or flexibility to say like, Hey, I might want to explore something else. Yeah. Like, it, we're never told that. And so I was thinking too, and I think we talked about this last time a bit. I th- think that being polyamorous is kind of akin to it. Like, cause you have to come out as being polyamorous and they, that they show that on the show as well. Like, um, some of the couples coming out to their parents being like, we're polyamorous and we're going to get married as a triad. And the parents have to accept it as if, you know, you're coming out as gay or trans. Um, do you think some people are born more inclined to be polyamorous than others? Um, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I think it's definitely, it's just who I am. It's part of my identity. Um, And I I think that's true for other people that I know who are poly as well. I think they're just people who have, like, I've always had this huge capacity to love people. Mm -hmm. And that combined with a really high sex drive. Yeah. (laughs) It it just, it's it's always made sense for me. And I've always loved multiple people at any time for, like, you know, as long as I can remember. And men and women and whoever. It was just, I love you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the words to put to that, but it's always been part of who I am, where it's like, of course it's perfectly normal that I'm going to love more than one person. It's like, you know, and then people hit back and they're like, well, you know, that's weird or, you know, how, cause it makes it like less important or whatever, like dilutes right. the other relationships. Yeah. But then I, I, I'm sorry. Continue. No, no, no. You. <laughs> oh no, no. So it's like, like people don't understand like, Oh, well, you know, maybe you don't love that person as much as that person. And then it's like, well, you have three kids. Do you like hate yeah. one of them and you yeah. like love two of them or like what? It's, it's just that the it, sex is involved now, so you have to make a choice. Right. Or something and like that. sex is so taboo, so we don't, you know, we don't want to talk about that. So yeah. once that is on the table, that changes everything. Are you, I, we didn't even, <laughs> uh, but are you, are you a group friend person? Like, are you able to hang out with like multiple friends at once and like all of your friends know each other and like, you're cool, like you love that? In general? Yeah. yeah. See, I'm, I'm not. Much, uh, and I think, um, I think that like, I'm a monogamous friend kind of person too. Like I like to keep, I'm like a jealous, this is why I like, whenever somebody brings up polyamory, I'm like, oh my God, no, I am such a jealous bitch. Like I would never, <laughs> I would never be able to handle it because even like if I hang out with my sister and one of her best friends and then suddenly I'm getting less attention than, you know what I mean? Like I think I'm, yeah. I was born monogamous, right? which is like. Yeah. I mean, it's, it sucks and it rules at the same time. Right. But at least you know that about yourself. (laughs) Yeah. Or I think, but, and I think you can also dabble in different types of relationships. Um, but what was, when was the first, I mean, I know that you were kind of always being polyamorous, but when did you kind of realize that that's what you were doing? Um, I would say like I was dating multiple people in, you know, college and in my twenties, I didn't know it was polyamory in my twenties, but mm-hmm. that's exactly what I was doing. Um, and then over the years I've been in some monogamous relationships because, um, 
usually that's what the other person has wanted. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, it's always that like, all right, I'll give it a try. And then I get into the relationship and then I end up cheating and then, you know, it all goes to shit. Mm. Um, and I just, and the cheating probably, comes from like a place of like, fuck, I just fell in love with this other person. Yeah. It's like, it's not from a place of, yeah, it's just like that relationship grew and I cared about them and there was that connection and it's kind of like, why am I denying myself more love? Yeah. You know, and, and then I would do that. And it wasn't really from a place of like, hey, I want to hurt my partner or there's anything wrong in this relationship. It was just, you know, I want more of this and I don't really... I don't like being told what not to do. I yeah. like to break rules. <laughs> I mean, polyamory literally means, though, more love. Like, it's not like you're... Yeah. And it's... I think what's so important about it and what I have really learned from the show, too, is, like, people are so fucking honest, like, almost... And I'm not to a fault at all, but, like, to a point that they're just so open. Like, one of the women brought... Um, she was dating a new... One of the women in the quad couple was dating another woman and she really, really liked her and she really loved having a new girlfriend. And then the other ones in the quad were like, okay, well maybe it's time for us to start dating her too. Like if she's that serious to you. And she was like, no, I really like, I just like being the one that she loves right now. Like, and it was, and it's really hard for me. Like the fact that like you guys would love her too. And then she was like crying and breaking down, but she was like, but ultimately I just want you guys to be as happy as possible. So like, I'm going to make this work. Yeah. It was so like, I, I cannot yeah. imagine having the capacity for that. Whereas most people would just like have a secret girlfriend and then spend all of that energy, like lying about it and being like secretive to the point that it's at, like really going to hurt the other person. Right. Like, I definitely think that there's, there's definitely the intent in all of these relationships to not hurt other people and to be as transparent as possible and to communicate. And it's, I think a lot of things are avoided just because of that if you're with good communicators. Yeah. I remember, too, when I was growing up, I knew this uh, family, like, it was a divorced couple or they were separated or something, and mm-hmm. they they would still hook up, and then they would also hook up with other people, and it was fine, and my parents would tell me about it. When I heard that, just, like, because of society and all that, I was like, oh, how terrible for them to be fine with that. Like they, oh, they must not yeah. really be in love if they're fine with that, which is such a weird thing. It's like, no, if they're fine with that, then that works for them. Yeah. And I think we're slowly seeing some more acceptance of that. Yeah. Um, it's been a slow go, but I think definitely as things, you know, as open relationships and non-monogamy and polyamory is showing up more in you know, pop culture and, you know, shows like polyamory and, um, have you seen the web series unicorn land by Mm -mm. Lucy Gillespie? Not yet, but I will check it out. It's super fun. Um, it's like an eight, eight part web series and I think they're like eight minutes each. So you can totally binge watch it. Okay. It's about, um, this gal who her name's Annie and she's just so uncomfortable in her skin and such a delight to watch because we've all been in every position that she's been in dating wise. Mm -hmm. And she just got divorced and she goes into the world being a unicorn, um, which is, you know, the very coveted single female that goes and hooks up with couples. Ah. And so it's kind of her like finding out who she is through these very, they're hilarious and awkward hookups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. So wait, (laughs) does she like, would you consider somebody who is like the guest player? Like, is that being polyamorous or is that just like a sexual experience? Um, it can be polyamorous. It could also be fall under the category of like swingers too. Yeah. Um, like I've definitely been the stunt cunt for a lot of situations. <laughs> yeah. Everybody from, um, uh, women who've never been with women before. And I'm like, all right, let's like, let me show you how it's done. Yep. Or, um, you know, married couples who've just opened up their relationship. That's always fun mm-hmm. to go in there and be the first person they're with. Nice, shiny um, new plaything. <laughs> Giving back to the world. Yes. Um, or, you know, similar situations like that. But it's it's definitely, um, sometimes it's just sex only. Like, they just want to yeah. fuck. And that's yeah. fine. But then again, I've had relationships with 
couples where it's, you know, I'm definitely the unicorn, um, but we all care about each other immensely and love yeah, each other. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so, it's just, it seems so like, I don't know why it seems so far fetched, like, because you're always told like, no, it's just two. But then yeah. it was so interesting in polyamory to watch these. It's, it's literally a crew that loves each other. And they're all kissing and they're all so aware of each other, like during every like sex, like love making. It's all fucking love making with multiple people in the room. It's mind blowing. Yeah, it can be. <laughs> You're like, or it can be a disaster. <laughs> well, I've been in some, you know, there have been some threesomes that have gone awry over my lifetime. So I'm like, it's, it's can be good, but it can also tank. <laughs> I mean, I've had one threesome and it was one of the worst experiences of my life. Just because I was feeling really body self-conscious that week. Uh, and so I was just like throwing condoms at them from the corner. And I was like, oh, be clean. <laughs> You're not being clean. Oh, that uh, was something I learned about from polyamory too was fluid bonding. Yes. We never addressed that last episode. Um, okay. So first, wait, I want to start for our novices, um, the different levels. Because there is kind of a hierarchy sometimes in most polyamorous relationships, if you wouldn't mind uh, diving into that again sure so um some people will have a hierarchy in how they do things and what they how they usually set it up is that there's a primary partner that is prioritized over the other partners and that could be um maybe somebody they live with in which case that's called their nesting partner Mm -hmm. um it could be somebody that they are married to you know who they have their family and their kids with or it could just be somebody who they spend um you know, the bulk of their time with. And then typically their favorite Netflix and chiller. Hell yeah. They're like, we watch all the same shows. (laughs) They are definitely my favorite. (laughs) I know, but not favorite. uh, Just a, no, no. And then, and then there's like secondary hierarchy too. So it's, um, I try to steer clear of that language in my relationships just because, um, I don't know. A lot of times it just reeks of couples privilege, which is another thing where it's kind of like, Hey, we're the married couple. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I live by myself. I'm not married. I don't have kids. Mm -hmm. I have a dog. That's more responsibility than I actually really want. Yeah. Um, (laughs) too many meals a day, you, right. So (laughs) many needs, but, and so a lot of times it, it, I have found dating married couples, especially it's like, Oh, it's like they get put before I get it. Like they get put before every, that partner's prioritized. And it's like, well, you know, I got to do this and I got to mm-hmm. do that. And it's just, it can be a shitty feeling if you are, um, if you feel less important yeah. or if, if that's, I don't know if you feel like you're not being included in things or it's like your time is not as valuable as anybody else's. It's kind of a shitty feeling. Yeah. Especially if you don't have too many other relationships going on and you're really focusing on that one and, and they're devoting more time and you're getting like none. Yeah. So I try to steer clear of hierarchy, creating a hierarchy. I cannot even think of the word hierarchical. I don't know, but I I try to avoid (laughs) that. Um, and just treat all my partners equally. And yeah, there's different emotional intimacy with each one, but I treat them all as equals. Um, and yeah. then that said, like you were talking earlier about some of kind of the setups or frameworks for these relationships. So mm-hmm. there's um, a setup that is a V and it's basically one person is the hinge and there's two partners and those partners are both um, romantically and or sexually involved with that main point person. But those two other people are not sexually involved with each other. Interesting. And I, yeah, and I've been in that situation before. Um, like you said before, a triad, it's basically a three-person relationship and everybody is involved with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a quad, you're just adding another person. I feel like I've been in a lot of hinges like that were against my will. like I'm hooking up with a guy and he's got like another girl and like that non-consensual hinges a non-consensual hinge is not is no fun um but a consensual one is wonder like I would love to be clued in on like a lot of hearing about your partner banging other people and being satisfied can be very hot oh yes and like super hot especially if you're all in the room and like yeah anyway um (laughs) I love it. Yeah. <laughs> like, but also it's kind of nice too, because 
in, in V's that I've been in before, I'm like, if something comes up and you just don't want to do it, like go to somebody's family, for, uh, their house for the holidays or something. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. That's why you have another girlfriend. Yeah. Like, get her to do it. Yeah. We know. So you can kind of pawn off some of the things you yeah, don't want to like, do. You're relying on the other person. It's nice. Right. Right. It's, it's not, it's a, it's a crutch, but in a nice way. Right. Um, <laughs> divide, divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Yes. <laughs> Collaborate or perish, I believe they've said. Yes. Um, so, ha- so I know you are pretty upfront with people when you first start speaking to them in a romantic way. Like, yes. Yeah. Like you've had it in your dating profile. Everybody knows from the, yeah, get. I think it cuts through a lot of the bullshit and it's, I mean, it's, I don't like wasting time. I don't like wasting my time. I don't like wasting their time. And it's, you know, it's like, it's the same thing. It's like if people, I'm not really held up to get married or have kids. And so it's kind of, I'd rather be upfront with that. If that's the path you're on. Great. But I'm yeah. not your lady for that. Like it's not going to happen. Um, so it's just in that thing too, where it's, but it could be like, I if you want to get married like it, and have kids, I'll yeah. also be your girlfriend for that. Right. <laughs> or no. Would you want to date somebody with kids ever? I have dated mm-hmm. people with kids. Um, and it's, it's challenging. Um, just because, you know, especially with young kids, they mm-hmm. just, there's so many things that they need and activities and it's just time constraints. Um, and it's very hard if you're, have, if you're juggling small children and you are married and you have a job, it's, it's kind of like the extra, you kind of are pretty low on the food chain at that point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> to just put it bluntly. No, because yeah. well, that's what but I mean. Again, we're... But you can also be like a really great fuck for that person too, where it's kind of like, hey, you just got away from your whole family and I'm going to fuck your brains out. So yeah. it can be a nice dynamic like that. You can be a nice reprieve. <laughs> yes. Or if you happen to like the kids, you're a wonderful lay that also is a babysitter sometimes. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Not me. Um I would honestly probably bang people just so I could babysit their kids. I'd be like, hey, you guys have a nice date night. I'm gonna hang. Uh, that is coming up in my motherhood episode. Okay. Anyway. Um, I can't wait. Yeah, no, it'll be great. My boyfriend can't wait. Um, <laughs> he's like, Jesus Christ. Um, what was the worst reaction that you've ever gotten from somebody that you were, when you said. About being poly? Yeah, yeah, about being poly. Um, I haven't really gotten any horrendous responses. I've gotten more um, just curiosity Mm -hmm. where people are like, oh, well, tell me about this. Tell me about non-monogamy and um, more kind of like dating rubberneckers. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You know, and and, and I kind of teeter between wanting to educate people, but then I'm also kind of like, I'm not your dating Sherpa either. Right, exactly. Um, Or a guinea pig. Actually interested in somebody... I don't know. I like I've dated monogamous people Mm -hmm. before and it's always been without fail. We date. Um, usually they stay monogamous to me sometimes like with, you know, some encouragement. I'm like, Hey, you know, maybe you should just go out and fuck somebody else or go on a date with somebody else. Just, I'm giving you full permission. Go do what you want to do. Um, and so in those relationships, I, it's always been a case of they've, we've had a great relationship. Um, they've learned a lot. They've, you know, they're great partners, but ultimately they have met somebody else who they wanted to marry and settle down with. Mm -hmm. And that's perfectly fine. And I just go into those relationships knowing that there is a shelf life and have fun while you can. And like you can love them for whatever period of time. Um, and then it's time for them to go on to the next phase of their journey or whatnot. Devastated by that. Um, I've had my heart beat up a little bit a few times unexpectedly where I've known. Yeah. I've known like, I, okay. So over this past summer, I dated somebody who was in town, um, and they were in the Navy and they were going to be in town for four months before they, uh, left the Navy and moved cross country. And so I knew going into it, this is four months. This is exactly what it's going to be. Yeah. We had so much fun together, great sex. And I was, I was very cautious. Like, you know, that this is going to end. Don't get too involved. Mm-hmm. And then when it came time for him to leave, I was, I was pretty upset about it. Yeah. And that, I feel like that's a natural human emotion. And like it, 
you can't be blamed for like, well, you knew this was going to happen. Like people are human and like you're going to be upset. And I think uh, that's one of the things I thought about polyamory is I was like, oh, you must have to like not give a fuck. But jealousy isn't isn't what giving a fuck is like no I think wanting that's, people I mean, to be happy human reaction that you care yeah exactly but i think it's it's more loving to not be jealous and just be happy for them i mean ultimately that's the goal and um we th- there's a term for that and it's called compersion mm. and it's a lovely word <laughs> and it's basically you're happy when your partner is happy yeah. and you derive happiness from that and it's a, and when it happens it's great but jealousy does come up. I don't tend to be a very jealous person, but those feelings do come up in these situations and you you might not expect it. And you're like, oh, well, you going out with that person or you spending that time with that person or you had that experience with somebody. It, it can come from so many different places, but those feelings do bubble up. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's perfectly normal. You can't just be like, hey, I'm Polly and now I'm not going to be jealous. That's yeah, that's not, that's not a happen. thing. <laughs> that's not like a, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be hungry anymore either. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I'm not going to poop. It's going to be great. Right. That's, yeah, that's a lovely feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and you've dated men and women. Do you think um, either is more accepting of polyamorous relationships or both kind of equal? Um, I think I think men are more accepting of it. Mm. Uh, I've run into... <sighs> I'm trying to figure out a way to put this sensitively. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to piss everybody off. Don't piss um, off at anyone. You'll get a blog yeah. written about you. Great. No. <laughs> I, I, no, I think men are more accepting. I think it's like for a lot of men, it's this, it's this like hot dream to like, well, they, first of all, they want to be able to go and carry and have sex and relationships with other people. Mm-hmm. Like that sounds great. I find a lot of times they have a harder time. Like it all sounds really good on paper until, until you go the out female the starts banging thing. someone else. Yeah. And they're like, Oh yeah. yeah. And it's like all that male machismo kicks in. Yeah. Sometimes. I forgot you had the same rights in this relationship. How strange. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then women, I just, I find I have a hard time dating women. Um, as a bisexual woman, because a lot of times the women I meet are kind of, they kind of have a problem that I'm into men too. Mm. And so maybe I'm just not dating the right women. Um, but I've, I've personally had more challenges. I actually recently talked to my friend about that because she dates men, women. She's mostly into trans people. And she said, there's Mm -hmm. a lot of, um, women who, who won't hook up with her if she's like, after they learn she's into dudes and, and other people as well. It's very strange because you would think that like it would be the most accepting community ever. Yeah, there's just it's strange thing. I'm glad to hear that because I've always I'm like, well, you know, I'm I never understood why. Like yeah. I don't understand why it's like that. Yeah, and it comes up over and over again. It's kind of like, oh, you're with a dude. Sorry, we can't hook up now. Yeah. Well, I think maybe if they just never want a dude in the same bedroom. <laughs> And that's perfectly fine. That's we'd be perfectly <laughs> fine. You're like, yeah, I'll do that on Tuesdays. You're Wednesdays, girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what and we talked about last time too, but a lot of my friends who are poly have said that scheduling is the most difficult thing about their polyamorous relation- relationships, not even jealousy. It's just making time for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. I am I'm the, I'm the champion of scheduling and flexibility and Google calendars. Yeah. <laughs> do you... Do you have different people for different like activities or moods? I, I have, well, my partners are all very different. Mm -hmm. Um, right now I'm seeing three men consistently. Mm -hmm. Um, they're all very different people, um, with different interests. And then there are two other people that I see occasionally. Um, and one of them is very involved in the BDSM world and the kink world. Mm -hmm. And so we tend to like, when I get together with that person, it's because I really just want to be tied up and fucked. Right. (laughs) Um, and so that's kind of what that is. Um, but everybody else, it's kind of, you know, one person's more outdoorsy than the other person. One person's very science techie. And so it's kind of, um, like I'm, I'm maintaining these relationships with all of these people, you yeah. know, one person's adventurous and will go to the sex clubs with me. So it's kind of, you get um, what you need from different people and you're giving equally them like what they need as well. Yeah. 
Yes. And are they seeing other people? Most? Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. It's so cool. Do you know everybody? It's good. Right now, I don't know. Um, in the past, so there's there's this thing called um, kitchen table polyamory and parallel polyamory, and those dynamics are basically um, like if a partner's partner doesn't really want to like meet you mm-hmm. and it's kind of like you just do your thing and have your relationship, but I don't really want to have a lot of overlap or interaction. That's parallel polyamory. We're okay. kind of, it's a little bit separate. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much most of my relationships right now. In the past, I've been in relationships practicing kitchen table polyamory, which is kind of my preference where everybody knows each other. Everybody gets together. In fact, in one of my relationships a year or so ago, um, like I would get together with, it was a V and I would get together with that partner and his, uh, live in nesting partner. And Mm -hmm. we'd have a meal usually like once a week and we would do outings together and we all did our birthdays together. And it was really nice just to have that openness. Yeah. It feels like a, like Taylor Swift squad, but with banging. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Like you just like have your squad and everybody knows that you're a squad and like everyone's got each other's back and like you dress fashionably. Or yeah, you and don't, I would hang or you out don't with dress at all. <laughs> my, the other, I would hang out with my partner's partner, which is the word for that is a metamor, and I would hang out with my meta, and we would go see movies together and do stuff together. It was just all very functional and nice. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, like I've been in in those wow. hinges, obviously, where you like where everybody knows, but nobody's been honest about it. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Like uh-huh. he's hooking up with somebody else and like we're all in the same place and she knows and I know and no and like it's weird and like there's nothing more dysfunctional than that. If it had all been above board though, we would have been best friends. I, like, I cannot agree with you more. I actually I just wrote an article on um why don't ask, don't tell relationship dynamics suck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In that, and I and I've been in those relationships, and it sounds like very similar for you too. It, you're immediately making the person who's in the dark a second class citizen. Yeah, you're like total side piece material at that point. Yeah, like that's mm-hmm. what's offensive. It's not oh, I don't want you to hook up with other people. It's like be proud of me. Yeah. Um. So yeah, nobody likes to be anyone's secret. Um. And I, I yeah, I just have such a respect for that in polyamory that it's like listen, like we talk about everything. You know everything. Um. And if you don't, then you're just yeah. in a monogamous cheating relationship. Right. And it's it's like going back to what you were saying before. It's kind of like my I don't necessarily have to have interactions with my partners, but I my partners talk about their significant others mm-hmm. and I talk about mine and it's I know what's going on in their lives and I care about them by proxy. You know, it's kind of I may not spend time with you, but I care about you because this other person cares about you. Yeah. There's also such a thing in monogamy with like the one. And like, it makes it like very difficult to talk about past relationships too, because it's like, you want to be the only source of happiness I've ever had. That's just a lot to ask. Right? Yeah. And it's a lot to ask of a per like even in a monogamous relationship, like one person can't give you everything. Like you have to go to friends and you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Or therapy. Or therapy. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, I think that looking for the one is just so, uh, fraught with drama. And it's just so unrealistic. Yeah. And like, what are you supposed to do if the one dies? Then they weren't the one anymore. Right. Then you, you, you find a new one. Yeah. Then you were a liar or I don't know. (laughs) I know. Then that's like, that's so completely devastating. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Not that it's not devastating if if one of your lovers were to die. Um, (laughs) Still sad just because you have other people doesn't mean you wouldn't be sad. Um, But yeah, it just makes it this whole thing that, oh, there's only this one person you're supposed to meet. And if you fuck it up or if it didn't go right, like, well, that's it. You're done. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I think one of the nice things is um, with having multiple partners is also, you know, if you're, if you need to reach out to somebody for something, you can kind of gauge like who is the best person for this situation. Yeah, And and it's kind of like this person, I lost my wallet. Who's good in a crisis. (laughs) (laughs) Who's my, who's the most appropriate lifeline in this situation. Yeah. Um, 
and it, or it's like, you know, this person's on vacation with their spouse. Try not to bother that. Or, you know, it's, it's, it's it just makes it easier to kind of like spread it a little bit. Yeah, um, definitely. I kind of, I think about that because so we talked about this last time too. Um, Netflix has this uh, series called Explained that I was featured on mm-hmm. for the female orgasm episode. Um, but the thing that got me hooked on the show is, is the monogamy episode. Um, mm-hmm. And I really recommend all of my listeners to watch it because it points out that monogamy isn't a natural thing for humans. Like we're just animals. Um, but we're the only animals that have created this construct and made it seem like it's the normal thing. Um, but yeah, so uh, I, I, in that episode, they were talking about raising children and how in certain tribes, like uh, a man or a woman who uh, was trying to get pregnant would fuck as many guys as possible because she wanted to give the kid uh, all of their great um, attributes um, cause they didn't really know about science, but they were just like, yeah, like everybody put all these great attributes in sperm in me and then we'll make this kid. And any man who would fuck the woman during that time was now a father. So the child literally would get those attributes in the raising by the different fathers, which is mm-hmm. like, it, it should take a village. Like, I totally agree. You know, it's like a household with even more love, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I do see those, um, you know, I have polyamorous, you know, parent friends and it's, I love seeing, you know, their kids are getting just more love. Right. Yeah. And like also the that, parents are getting some help. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Duties, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Like it, how nice is that? Oh, we, we're four people with one kid. Like, let's do this. <laughs> this kid's going to be a genius. <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to tutor him. He's going to play sports. Um, I hate this. And think sirens. of like all the interests you would learn from more than two parents. Yeah. Um, kind of cool. It's really cool. Very interesting perspective because everyone always is like, well, what about the kids? Like kids, kids adapt to whatever you teach them. And as long as like the people in question are being nice and honest to each other, the kids are pretty accepting. And they don't, in my experience, they don't really question it too much. It's, they, I told you last time, it was like one of my partners is married and has two small children. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the one of the children walked in while he was kissing another one of the kids' uh, friend's moms mm-hmm. and was like, hey, why are you kissing, you know, so-and-so's mom? And a simple like, because I love so-and-so's mom and, you know, your mommy knows about it. And she's fine with it. And it was just all that we need, that was all that was needed to be said. Yeah. And it was like, move along. And now that person will stay at their house. They'll, you know, hang out and have dinner or watch movies. And they, there's no questioning of it. It's just like, okay, this is cool. Yeah. You're it, here. And it's not You're disrespectful fine. to the mom. The mom knows. I have an opposite story. Yeah. I didn't even t- tell you, but I have a, a friend at, or her dad was having an affair and she knew from like a really, really early age, like she was like four or something. And, oh, wow. and she went over to the dad or to the mom and she goes, mommy, why does daddy have a friend and you don't? And <gasps> yeah. And the mom didn't know about the affair, but the kid has such intuition that it was like my mom's being disrespected, which is so yeah. much worse than my parents are having consensual relationships with other people. It was like he's literally put himself above and you're in the dark with no friend. Wow. Yeah. Really intense. How insightful. Yeah. Really intense. Um, but so um, so when we talk a lot about like communication. It's, it's very difficult for me. Um, you're obviously very good at it because you can juggle so many relationships. Um, have you always felt communicating in the bedroom to be easy? I have. Um, well, I, my first sexual experience was when I was 15. And with another it was person? Not, it was not good. <laughs> um, it was, I had sex with an older uh classman who was like the cool lacrosse player oh, good. And, and the condom broke oh, and I didn't God. get my period no. and I panicked and freaked out and my I was calling a friend to tell your fast times at it. Ridgemont High yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
And my mom overheard the conversation and then immediately I was told that I was a slut and a whore and you name all the names at 15 instead of using it as a learning moment to be like, Hey, yeah, you know, here's, here's how you use birth control or, you know, maybe I'm so sorry for never helping you or telling you about, yeah, yeah. Um, well that sucks. Yeah. And so then did you stop banging? Yeah. Like I thought it was really bad. And then I, like I was masturbating, like, I, I had been masturbating since I was six and, coming. Um, and would hide in my bed and listen to Dr. Ruth Westheimer on my Walkman and listen to the episode and ha- shove it under my pillow and masturbate. And oh so I was, I was like aware of my body, but with myself, but with other partners, I, you know, I just like bumbled my way through bedrooms in high school and college. And it was just so terrible. And I basically, this is a terrible, it's terrible, but Right, my mom died when I was 17 and in high school. And a few weeks after she died, I was like having bad sex. And I went to the adult bookstore, you know, with the Mm -hmm. blacked out windows and bought a vibrator because I was like, fuck it. Like, I need to, I I don't need dick to feel good. Like, I can do this myself. (laughs) No, literally, I I posted this the other day. I was like, if they want to teach like health to girls, it should go like this. If you want to make a baby, have sex with a penis. If you want to have an orgasm, buy a dildo, a vibrator, a clitoral suction device, and maybe some pizza for later. Yes. Like, I love that. <laughs> like, we would never have to get pregnant. It would cut down on all the teen pregnancies right there. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh and my. STDs, STIs. I'm going to have yeah. to have a sex ed episode because sex ed is so, so fucking lacking. Um, it's so fucked. It's still so much abstinence only programming. And it's kind of like, they're going to do it anyway. Day, kids are going to have sex. Yeah. You were, ma- you were coming when you were six. My friend, well, Brit I don't know was, if I was like coming, but I was, but like, you were I was masturbating, masturbating yeah. on the bathroom, like fuzzy mat in the bathroom, feeling pretty good yeah. and doing it over and over again. Cause it felt good. Do you remember the first time it actually was like an orgasm orgasm though? Um, I think my first, I don't know. I mean, I don't, no, I don't. I mean, I know the first time I had like a super awesome orgasm was when I bought the Hitachi magic wand. Like that rocked my world. Yeah. People love that. Yeah. Um, um, no, but, but now I, I've kind of swapped that for the womanizer. I know it's so good. I, we just, I just went to a, an event the other night for their new mm-hmm. Liberty and it's like this teeny tiny, the like buttons uh, in the exact right place. Oh, it's amazing. I know it's like angels kissing your pussy. It I is, it. it is angels, your best friend, your mother, your sister, like everyone right? who's ever been great to you in your life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's insane. I know. Um, yeah. But no, I think I've gotten, like, as I've gotten older and, like, realized, like, first of all, nobody in bed is a mind reader. Mm-hmm. I think we all need to figure that out because it's like, I can't predict what a guy wants yeah. and he can't predict what I want. And it's kind of, you know, if you don't ask for what you want, you're not going to get it. Totally. Close mouth, don't get fed. Hell yeah. Do you ever keep, like, a dossier of, like, who likes what sexually? You're like, ah, oh, Caleb loves the balls. <laughs> Um, I actually, this year, <laughs> funny, you should ask this year, I started a sex cell sheet. Nice. And so it's, it's pretty great. And it, it basically documents every single sexual experience and it's kind of, you know, who it was, where it was, how many times did I come? How many mm-hmm. times did they come? How did we come? What? Like, and it's just, it's this. You should make I'm that really a blog. fascinated to have all these data points at the end of the year. No, literally turn it into a blog. Like I will send everyone oh, to will. read it. It'll be amazing. <laughs> I want to read it. I used to keep a note of like, cause, cause you have to keep a list of how many guys you fuck just in case you want to know your worth immediately, you know? Um, and so I started keeping a list, but I would, I would put emojis next to it, like based on how the sex was. I love it. Yeah. So what was the emoji for like the best sex? My current boyfriend, he got uh, three smiley faces, a uh, uh, watermark, watermark, and hands up. Nice. Yeah. It was nice. like shocking. I was like, oh my God, he does stuff that girls like. That's so crazy. Imagine that. Imagine that. You pay that. attention in bed. Yeah. Um, and for my next trick, I'm going to date a boy who likes me. No, I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> <laughs> No, he likes me. He's great. Um, oh, fluid bonding. Oh, yeah. Let's get back to that. Oh, yes. So back to fluid bonding. 
Um, fluid bonding, when I learned about it, uh, was the quad. One of the women had started dating this guy, and the guy couldn't come using condoms. Like, he didn't like using condoms at all, and she was like, well, I'm not going to fluid bond with you unless I talk to the quad. And the quad was so nice that they were like, I I think his name was Jason. They were like, Jason doesn't want to fuck with condoms, so we're all going to start using condoms now. And him and, like, Stacy are going to get tested. And so Mm -hmm. she started fluid bonding with her boyfriend, and then the rest of the quad just, like, adjusted so she'd be happy with her new boyfriend. Yeah, it's pretty great that they did that. It's insane. I was like, (laughs) I would never be so selfless. I hate condoms. I know. I do too, but then, you know, it's when you're fucking multiple people, STIs are always a concern. Yeah. Um, so you got to be careful. And do you find that people in the polyamory community are more open about STDs and STIs? Uh, yes. I actually had an article go live today um, mm-hmm. on Kinkley about my great chlamydia scare of the summer of 2018 okay. that happened about a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in which... I, see, I base I get tested every three months um, um, and do a full panel of everything, and then more often, if somebody new has been brought into the mix or if there's a reason for concern, mm-hmm. um, and this is a good example of people being super compassionate and good communicators. Yeah. So I had a partner uh, test positive for chlamydia over the summer, and he called me and told me, and I was grateful for that information. And then you had to call the went, snow chain. Well, I went and got, I saw, I I couldn't get into Planned Parenthood because it was like 4.30 on a Tuesday or something. So I went to my neighborhood walking clinic, which was a big fucking error because, you know, me, little miss transparency, I go in and I'm like, hey, you know, I am poly, I'm non-monogamous. One of my partners tested positive. I need to get tested. And it was immediately, here's a list of all the terrible diseases that your vagina is going to like shrivel up and die from. I'm like, okay, great. Just give me the test. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to be proactive here. You know, I'm trying to look out for my health. Yeah. Not be shamed for it. That's like literally coming in and being like, I have diabetes or like shouldn't eat all that sugar. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Lay off the ice cream. Well, what you're going to do now? Right. And so it was, they immediately put me on antibiotics before the tests came back. They're like, well, you know, and you know, you probably have it. Mm -hmm. So here's antibiotics. And I came home and, reached out to all my partners um, because that's what you do when you're an ethical human being. Yeah, you you yeah. want everybody to have informed consent about their health or what they may have been exposed to. And everybody was so great and so gracious about it and just appreciative. And um, I was pretty much beating myself up over it because I was like, fuck, like there is a spider web effect of what my behavior could do to mm-hmm. other people. And I would really, you know, Chlamydia, it seems like almost everybody has, the stats are, chlamydia is so prevalent, yeah. um, and it's really easily treatable, it's not the worst thing in the world, and it's, but I was treating it like, holy shit, like, I'm a sex writer and a sex educator, and I got a diagnosis, and I'm freaking the fuck out, yeah, what do yeah. I, it's, like, if I can't talk about it, who can, right. um, but everybody was so cool about it, and then they got tested, and everything worked out fine, it, but it was, it was definitely, it's That's, a concern, yeah, you know, it everybody's was like on top of it, but I was just so appreciative that, you know, even one of my partners, I was texting back and forth, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to go back and get retested and all this stuff. And he was like, you know what, you kind of are, you're beating yourself up over this a little bit. It's pretty common. It's treatable. I tested negative. It's all good. Like cut yourself some slack. And I was just, I was grateful for that. Like nobody stigmatized it at all. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think we're going to have to do an STD episode too, because there's a lot of people that are like, uh, you know, scared to even even broach the subject because they're like, I don't, I don't want to talk about my HP. Like I, I talked about my HPV, and people are mm-hmm. like, you're so brave, and I'm like, what? Everyone's got HPV. It's so common. Yeah. Um, but I, I think actually, it scares, you know, it scares people from going to get tested because they're afraid of what that might be. Yeah. I, as long as you're disclosing it, it's like that's all that matters. It's not that big of a deal. I agree. But STDs are for another conversation. Yes. Um, this has been the best. You're the best. I'm so happy. Uh, that... I think you're the best. Ah, oh, you're great. Um, well, <laughs> next, maybe sometime in New York, we'll hang out. Um, I would love that. Uh, Sharon, will you remind my listeners yes. where they can find you and read your stuff? 
internet handle i'm on instagram at super good sex that's probably the easiest thing to find me um and then that links to my portfolio and anything that's coming out okay perfect uh you can also follow sharon right on twitter at sharon pfeiffer c-h-a-r-y-n-p-f-e-u-f-f-e-r she's verified you'll find her i'll spell it out for you and uh (laughs) Sharon, I had to ask you last time and I have to ask you this time too because it's a separate sexual experience. Did you finish? <laughs> uh, over and over again. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and we'll see you next time on How Come. Bye. Bye. It's not you, it's me. I try so hard to finish honestly. They say you'll know. When you go all the way from A right down to O Oh no I think that I still got a ways to go Oh oh I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just.